Welcome to another episode of A Thousand Hours Out the Mud. It's your boy J3 checking in. It's your boy Shaw, man. Let's, let's back for another one. Man. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, yeah. follow us on YouTube, yeah. Instagram, TikTok, where it get hot. Snapchat, yeah. wherever you at, we at. I already know that. We got a special one for y'all today, man. Special one. They call him Mr. Uh, Turn the lights on. We get activated, huh? When the light's brightest, he plays his best. I swear to goodness, that boy was... Come on, man. All ACC at Syracuse, you know what I'm saying? Got it out of there at three. Drafted third round, you know what I'm saying? So it was only right he was going to ball. 2023 stats, let's just go ahead and you feel me? Let him know we working with 35 solo tackles. So you know he's sticking his nose in there. Five sacks. I seen him coming off the edge like a madman, boy. Flag on the play. <laughs> Flag on the play. <laughs> hey, one force fumble, went crazy, and then two interceptions, man. I think you had about 35, 39 yards on things, so he picking up the yak with it too, man. We got a 5 2 Melifon in this thing, man. Yep, yep, yep. Yes, sir, Ski. Welcome on the show, my brother. What up, though? Appreciate y'all having me. Yeah, man. Appreciate you, bro. You know what I'm saying? We, uh, we honestly had to say agent, and we've been locked in for a minute. Yep, but yep. when you when you popped the HOA the other day, we like, damn, we got we got to get bro on the pod. And, and, and then we go, you got the ties with you know go back to you know big bro Ob shout out to Ob. Oh, fact, you know we played we OB. played with Ob when we was with the band this year one of USFL. So it's only right that you know, especially after the season you just had. We gotta gotta go behind the, go behind the curtains and, sure, and, and give sure. us a little insight on that, my brother. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. We gonna get there though. We gonna get there. <laughs> definitely gonna get there, man. So shoot, kick it off, man. Tell the people how feel me football came into your life. Started about like seven, eight years old. Um, I got three older brothers and an older sister, and they all played football. So like, just being sis too. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. My sister played as well. So like, since I was the youngest. I just wanted to do what they did, and then after, shoot, after my first year, just fell in love with it, and I knew that's what I wanted to do. You the coldest? Yeah, yeah, I say, <laughs> I say so. But I think they would all look. I don't know though. Like, they know I am, but they won't say that. Like, yeah. my oldest brother will say like he'll still say he's the coldest. <laughs> Obi will probably say he's the coldest. Like, so it depends. I feel like they know though. Deep down, they know though. Yeah, I mean, you supposed to be though, low key. Yeah. You got time to watch all of that, so. You know, being the youngest, you just got to be a sponge towards it. That's how it was with Melo. Like, you feel like you when you watch your bros and your, everybody else go through it, you all you doing is soaking that up. Yeah, soaking that up, and then sh- you going crazy. So, hey, I peep you was from Nigeria though, bro. Mm-hmm. Born and how, raised. Well, you from nah, the states, nah, nah, nah. but your people's from Nigeria. Yeah, parent, both parents born and raised. <laughs> I was born in Boston. Yeah, uh, and raised in Massachusetts, but both parents. Um, born and raised, so I'm first generation. Speak on that, like, how did that, you feel me, that descendant shape you in a way, shape you in your like, family? I feel like all Nigerians, you know, are just like blessed with athleticism. Like no matter what what Nigerians, you know, they're just blessed with athleticism. I just feel like growing up being Nigerian, it just instilled a lot of like pride and pride in you and just um, dedication, like hard work. Like Nigerians are just, Athletic and just so hard working, like no matter what field they go into, whether it's in sports or it's in like science or engineering or something like that. So I feel like my parents and my just my family instilled that in me when I was young. My best friend from school, he from Ghana, which, you know, they still in Africa, but like his parents was real strict on them and real like focused, like, you know, you're going to do this, do that, do that. Ain't no extra like sports and stuff like that, but ain't no extracurricular outside of that. Yeah, I would say my mom was my mom was strict. Like at first, she didn't even really want us to play football like that. But I, by the time it got to me, like they already played, so there, there was nothing really she could do. But she was very strict. Like she, I said I wanted to be in the NFL, but she wanted to meet me to be like a lawyer or something, like lawyer, engineer, doctor. So like every week we'd have to print out our our grades and put it in a um, a little folder, and my mom would check it. So like if the grades wasn't good, you couldn't do no like, you couldn't play no football, basketball. So I feel like 
that was a motivation to keep me on the field. Like my grades was always good, but honestly, it probably came from that, mm -hmm. knowing that if my grades weren't good, I wasn't playing. Facts. So yeah, that's that's really what like she instilled in us. Moms weren't playing it. I was on the same <laughs> tip, bro. That's why I did so good in school. <laughs> that's just true. Play what? For real. I swear, that it won't no option. Yeah. So man, take us through your high school journey. So you know, before you got to Syracuse, <clears throat> how did that all come about? Yeah, um, playing in high school, I was on I was on varsity my freshman year, but I was on all three teams. So I was on freshman, uh, JV, and varsity. We yeah. barely had any. We had like five freshman games though, so it wasn't. You played all, every game that we took. I, I, yeah, I played. Yeah, I played on all games. of them. <laughs> three, yeah, three <laughs> three games, three games, and it was just like, I think um, on freshman I was the quarter. We we ran double wing though, so we wasn't uh, like doing nothing crazy. But freshman I was the quarterback. Uh, JV, I was one of the running backs, and then, and then varsity, I didn't really play too much. I played a little. I played defense. I played safety, and then I got switched to corner. Um, but then I would go in for like jet sweeps or like screen oh, passes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, I was a freshman. They wasn't trying to get let a freshman like you know play like that. So I would just go in trick plays. Hold on, I'm tweaking. You play on all three teams at the same time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played on all three <laughs> at the same time. So I had three, three games a week. I had three, yeah, I would have three games a week, but sometimes like because I'm from Massachusetts, so like a lot of teams might not have a freshman team. So like every week we wasn't always playing like okay. but no, it was like <laughs> me it was me and another dude. We both we played on all three. He he played less on varsity, but yeah, bro, like Thursday having having to have a freshman game or like on on a Monday, crazy bro, <laughs> crazy. So, is that where the whole DB got introduced to you? Like, did, what, which one of those? Because I hear you say you play both sides of the ball. So, which which was your position that you wanted to play? I always thought that I would go to college and go to the NFL as a running back because that's what I played in. And Pop Warner, cold. I was so cold. Pop Warner, like we would we would play teams and. They would come in and they would say, "We're not playing if he's playing." <laughs> That's happened to me a couple of times. And Boy, I, was I had him sit, out there, and I had to sit out, and I would only, I could only play defense, or. Um, but that's I always wanted to be a running back. Obi was a running back, and I just, um, and I just always watched running backs. Like Barry Sanders was my favorite player. But all those great running backs were my favorite players. But um, then we got into high school. Like we didn't, we didn't go against throwing teams like that. So freshman year, I was playing safety, but I was just back there. Like, I had one, I had one pick as a, a freshman, hail mary at the end of the half. Um, but like, no teams was throwing like that. So I was offense was my thing. Cold at offense, I always wanted to play offense in college. But then it's just like, I just end up getting recruited as like as a DB. As a, I got moved to corner, strapping at corner, and then I went to all the camps as like kind of like an athlete. Mm -hmm. But you know how that go. They like if you're not really like refined in in offense, Facts. they moving you to defense kind of thing. So that's that's kind of what happened. I was like an athlete. Some some schools saw me as both, but not really. And then I was just just getting straight like corner corner offers and stuff like that. But did you embrace it at that point? Once you because I think that's the hardest thing Facts. is to embrace it. Yeah. No. Once 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 like Obi was at UConn at safety. Then I was kind of like, okay, yeah, I kind of mess with defense, like just watching it and everything, and then just playing it more, playing corner more, and then like as we got, as I got older in high school, we started playing more throwing teams. Like it was weird. Like my freshman sophomore year, Massachusetts, everyone was just running the ball, running the ball, double wing, like eye formation. But then we play, we started playing some spread out teams, and I was getting like getting picks and stuff, so I liked it more. And then I was going to the camps and just like strapping at, at DB at corner and I just ran with it at that point and I knew like Obi was playing um safety in, at UConn I knew I'm I'm gonna be a DB I liked it though did UConn ever recruit you yeah yeah, yeah. you <coughs> UConn you know they was coming for a little bro yeah UConn UConn was my first or second offer no UConn was my second offer and uh BC was my first yeah so what yeah. Why Syracuse then? <laughs> if you got a big bro but, at, at um, UConn. UConn was just like, I, I wanted to make my own path. I didn't want to be like, have people compare me to him all the time, stuff like that. Um, and they were really, they weren't good. So, uh, 
I got I got um recruited by <laughs> BC. BC BC was just too close. Like it's 35 minutes from from the crib. Like, oh yeah, yeah. I didn't want to do that. I'm just gonna be right back in the same spot, right. hanging with the same same people. Not like they weren't good people, but I just wanted wanted some different my mm -hmm. own college experience. And then Syracuse was my was my third offer. And I just liked the coaches and everything. And then I kind of like, once I got the offer, I kind of started talking to the dudes in my class and everything. Um, and we got a couple dudes in my class that are, that's in the league right now. So I became friends with them and everything. And I, at that point, I just, I had it set. I ended up getting Michigan offer though, like five days before signing day. Damn. But it was like too, it was like too yeah, late. Too late. Yeah. He was yeah. locked was in already. Too late. Yeah. Mm -hmm. too late. <clears throat> So shoot, you go to you go to Syracuse, bro. Speak on your first year being red shirted, cause I ain't red. Did you red shirt? I red shirted. I didn't red shirt, but I wish like in the back end. Look, I wish I would have red yeah. shirted. No, that that was a blessing though. Obi told me to red shirt. He red shirted, and he was like, when you go on visits, tell them you only like that's the only way you would come if you red shirt. So I told Syracuse that, and and my coach was with it, but he was like, oh. You red shirt, you gotta stay all five. And I just I said yeah. <laughs> when I was I said yeah. But I didn't end up doing that. But just Obi was like, he's seen too many people play one snap, two snaps, one game, and they hold and they hold things Black burned. Hole. So yeah, the whole year is gone. So you don't and they and they gonna they gonna lie to you too, like, no, you're gonna be a starter, da da da. You're mm -hmm. gonna play a lot and you're gonna play three and you play three snaps, you play twenty snaps, play two games. It's not worth it. Facts. So and I was skinny too, so I I wanted to um, get bigger, get stronger, and really like I didn't have no technique. Like I didn't have technique. I was just an athlete at mm -hmm. corner, so I wanted to learn technique, and then you know put myself in a better position where I could actually play and get on the field. Damn, that, I ain't gonna lie though, cause that's that's dope. Just that perspective, and that's that big brother role. You know what I'm saying? Just having that <clears throat> somebody already there because like. I went to college naive. I didn't really yeah. know what was up, but like having that mindset, and I feel like that's dope to tell, you feel me, to the youth coming up because the I feel like the mindset now is just like I'm trying to go wherever I can start, wherever I can, you yeah. feel me? No, nah, that's where get they the, get the most money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, now, yeah, that now too. it's about money. <laughs> yeah, nah, facts. But it's like, what's, what's that going to lead to in the long run? You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And shoot, you, you dang going to get that red shirt early, like. That should mm -hmm. definitely probably helped you, and even leaving early. Mm -hmm. So, what led to that? Matter of fact, now that we're speaking on that, well, so I really had I had two more years left, so I had one more year, and then we had the COVID year, so I could have stayed an extra year, but it was just like the season I had. It was like I, it was time. It was time for me to go. Like I, I put my name in the NFL advisory board. I was I was hearing good things back, and then agents was contacting me. Um, I had some agents, you know, reach out to teams and kind of see where I was valued at. And then just a like it was like a bunch of things together. Like we went one and ten that mm -hmm. year, that COVID year, we were, we were bad. So that played a part into it. And it was just like the offense we ran at Syracuse. It was um it was that up tempo. Mm -hmm. uh, style they took from Baylor, Art Browse and everything. So we would snap the ball and like within like 16 seconds. Mm -hmm. So like the defense was playing so much. Like mm -hmm. there was a bunch of games we played 100 snaps. So that's just a lot of like yeah, that's, that's a lot. lot of wear and tear. <laughs> like I seen a lot of a lot of dudes get injured and everything. Me included. I had some injuries at Syracuse, some hamstring injuries at Syracuse. So that that played a factor, but. With my season, the season I had, I was like, yes, yeah, it's, it's time to go, though. So what was that process like, you know, coming out, especially for, you know, being a Nigerian, you know, putting on for the for the culture? Like, what was that for your family? What did that mean for your family and you at that point in time going through that draft process, get selected by Detroit? It was exciting. Um, I feel like it wasn't so much pressure or anything like that because we just had went through this similar thing, like, Four or five years prior with Ob, mm -hmm. so like everyone's kind of seen it and like been in that process, so it wasn't like I was new to it. Um, obviously, it was a, it was a hell of a feeling, like a moment I always remember, just getting drafted with all my family and and my friends there in my living room and everything. So that's definitely a moment I always remember. What was that talk though? Because I know I know Ob was I know he was right there talking on it, like 
Especially while you was about to get drafted and when you got drafted, he went third round, you went second round. I know no, he was no, opposite. Flip. He oh, flip, went flip, flip. My fault. Yeah. What I say just now? You said he went third round. No. Yeah. You went third round. He went second round. So I know he was he had to put some competitive talk in there. Nah, he but that's the thing. People <laughs> ask that, but he didn't though. Like That's love. He didn't. He didn't do that at all. Like it was like the second day and it was kinda because I was a later pick in the in the third. I was pick one on one. So I think after me it was only like 10, 12 other picks, and then that day was done. But he just kept telling me it's gonna come, like it's gonna come, it's gonna come today. Um, because where I was projected at was actually second. Mm -hmm. It was actually the second round, and it was a lot. I don't like to look at the mocks too much, but like there was some mocks like where me sneaking like pick 31, 32. So I don't know. He was just encouraging me the whole time. It wasn't no like real competitive stuff like that. See, that's love, man, because when you got that type of support around you, you feel me? Like like you said, ain't no pressure. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? You just sitting there, you could be easy, be at peace, and then ultimately when your name did get called, you know what I'm saying, and you seen it was Detroit, like, what was those emotions? Because you're going to a city that won't really known for winning for a while. Yeah, it wasn't even <clears> like, <throat> you don't, in that moment, you don't even think about that, honestly. Facts. Like, you're just happy to get the call. And then you think about all this other stuff later, like who's on the team, what was the record. But like in that moment, you don't think about that. You're just happy. I got the call. I was in the kitchen and just listening to them talk and everything. And I was just excited. I really didn't even know what to say, like mm -hmm. lost for words. So I thought about all that other stuff later. But even then, you're just happy to like to be in the league now. Like, you know what I mean? And, and And start playing and everything. So you don't think about that too much. Or I didn't, at least. No, you can't. I yeah. mean, because like you said, if you start, well, first off, once you start thinking about that, you your mind start going yeah. to places where it don't need to be. But mm -hmm. like, you realize now, like, it's the beginning, for mm -hmm. real, for real. Like, mm -hmm. so was you already like hungry because you knowing what Big Bro had already touched? Yeah, no, nah, for sure. And then, and also just like the call I got from the, uh, the DC the next day, I was definitely hungry because he was like, you know, we got some starters, but it's open now. Like, you know, if you compete and, and win it, it's it's open. So it's not like we got locked starters. or Because we didn't have dudes that was high paid. We had dudes on their uh, rookie contract. Mm -hmm. So that that definitely motivated me a lot when, when Coach uh, Glenn called me the next day. So how was that first transition, you know, coming from college to the league? Tell us to, about that first rookie season. Bro, that transition was like... That first transition is crazy, especially at corner. At corner, like corner, I think is the hardest position to play. A second, uh, other than other than <laughs> other than uh, other than quarterback. A second, back. <clears throat> but I think it's the hardest position to play on defense. Like coming in at corner, like bro, everyone's fast. Bro. Yeah. Like, <laughs> everyone's fast. Everyone's quick. Like every like every receiver's good. Like, and then and then you you still trying to figure out your technique and kind of like what, what the coach wants you to play because, you know, DCs and DB coaches have kind of like what they want their corners and DBs to look like. But the biggest thing I would say was the playbook. Mm -hmm. I came in, they told me in training camp, or really OTAs, I need you to learn corner nickel safety. <laughs> corner nickel safety. And every day we get in 10 <clears throat> to 12 coverages every day. And I'm having to learn them at corner nickel safety. I did not know anything about nickel. I never played nickel. I played safety one year in high school, but we didn't. I was just in the post. Right. We didn't have no plays. Like just be back there. I didn't know no Ralph Larry rotations, <laughs> none of that. The gaps, like swaps and all that. None, nothing. I'm <laughs> foreign learned, language. I, there was foreign <laughs> language, and I'm having to learn it. But then they're not even really. They're not putting me at safety. So I'm just like trying to like really focus on the corner stuff but then randomly they put me at nickel it was bro it was so <laughs> much it was so much i had so much going through my head my rookie year and then it kind of calmed down when i started um when i started playing like i was only at corner mm -hmm. they told me okay you're only gonna be at corner and then, and then it calmed down I, and then i got comfortable uh my rookie year i ended up starting my second game because okuda ended up getting hurt the first game of the season First game versus San Fran, I was at like dime, so third down. Okuda got hurt, then I started the second game. Yeah. So my first game ever starting yeah. uh, Green Bay, 
Mm. Green Ooh, Bay on a Green they, Bay on Devontae? a yes. Sunday Ooh. night. <laughs> Sunday night. Sunday night or Monday night. My first game, Devontae Adams, bro. It's time to strap in. Nah, so, so <laughs> I swear, I was, I was so like, I was nervous and excited at the same time, bro. Like, it's almost like one of them things you can't. I don't even know how to. <laughs> yeah. like, you can't think about. You can't think about it too much. Like, Facts. damn, I'm going against the best receiver in the league <laughs> and Aaron Rodgers. And it's my and first he got start. The co- and he first got the, start, my yeah. first start. And he got the coldest releases. And it's and it's Sunday night. I, it was Sunday night or Monday night. And it's Sunday night, bro. I'm going like it's bro, prime the whole time. World watching, bro. <laughs> the whole world watching, bro. Like I couldn't think. I the amount of release like press work I did that week yeah. was insane, bro. <laughs> like insane. Like every in between every period after practice, I was doing. Like, Let me just get, get a couple reps. Yeah, and get, and get ready, but. I ended up playing well in the beginning of that game. I had actually had a breakup, but then I had I got injured. I pulled my quad Damn. that game on the deep ball to Devontae Adams. I had pulled my quad, Damn. so I was out for a long time. My, my uh, I was out for a long time my rookie year, and then I came back. Ended up starting the last like four games. It was cold out there when y'all went up. No, no, because it was it was the second week of September, so it wasn't oh, okay. cold. I wasn't cold. Still pretty warm. So what yeah, would y'all warm. end up y'all that rookie year? What was y'all record? Record three thirteen and one. So a typical Detroit season. Yeah. But then the old the old typical Detroit yeah, season. Right. But then yeah, that's when that they had the culture shift. The culture shift when new coach Dan Campbell came in. Well, so that year was Dan Campbell's first year. The three and ten year. Three rookie. um yeah three thirteen and one was his first year, first draft class. And that's when we went three thirteen and one. But when you look at that season, and you look at the scores. Mm-hmm. A lot of them we lost in the last minute, two minutes. Was golf y'all quarterback already? Golf was a quarterback. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's y'all a, did yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. That we season lost, was a start. Uh, like oh shit. These yeah, days. you can start yeah. seeing the y'all transition. Was we was games. losing by like bro the last second <laughs> field remember, goals. Yes. Justin Tucker made a NFL record field goal sixty six mm-hmm. yards. Like so, a lot of like was like we were close. Like we're not just getting blown. Like obviously, sometimes a couple games maybe we got blown out, maybe right. But a lot of them games was like, bro, like we need a few clean up a few things. Like yeah. we right there, we, it was almost like we was losing the games. Like right, like we had it and we was losing the games. You know what I mean? And then the next year it was just like we started off one and six, and it was like, damn, it's gonna be the same thing again. And then I don't know what like. We just all like had bought in, and we went on a crazy winning streak, and we won eight out of the last ten, and went nine and finished nine and eight, and we was one game away from playoffs. I remember that. Yeah, yeah one yeah. game away, and then that, after that season, that's <coughs> when we knew, like, that's when for sure we knew, yeah, like what what we could do the next season, yeah. which was this last season. Yeah, I mean a lot a lot of people picked y'all to win to go far. Oh, facts I mean, early. Yeah. True wife, her whole family from Detroit, bro. Yeah. So you feel me? Going into this season, it was already a bunch of hype. Like grandma, she been ride or die for I don't know how yeah. long. But going into the season, like, hey, we up this time. It's yeah. gonna be us. So like going into the season, like, what was the team? You feel me? What was y'all feel like? What was that? You know what I'm saying? Behind the scenes, locker room, like Dan Campbell talk. Like, what was all that feeling like? I mean, yeah, it was like you said. It was a lot of hype. Like a lot of hype in the media and just like around the city. But it was like what Coach Campbell was saying in the locker room was like everyone expects us to go to playoffs, but we not just trying to go to playoffs. Facts. Like we not just we don't just want to go and okay, even if we lose first round, like we trying to go to like make the whole thing. You know what I mean? So and like NFC championship. So that's what he was talking about the whole time. NFC championship, Super Bowl so like there was a lot of hype, like oh we can make playoffs or we can have a winning record, but we was trying to like go all the way, bro. That's yeah. that's what was our mindset the whole season, and we knew we could do it. Just like how we finished the last season, like we we finished real hot. So that it literally just carried over and then in, and then into the draft, it it just carried over into the season. This year you had they moved you to safety this year, right? So they moved they ended up moving me my second year. To safety and like OTA training camp and that, that in between time they moved me to safety. How was that transition? That that transition was tough. My second year, that transition was real tough. Like I didn't really want to do it. Like I wasn't fully bought into it. Like I did it. Mm-hmm. It was one of them things I like. They tell you like I, I didn't really think 
You know, sometimes when a coach tells you something, you don't think you really have a choice. Yeah. But I think I really did have a choice, but I didn't know it. But I didn't fully buy in when I when I moved. And it's just like, because I never played safety other than high school, mm -hmm. and I don't even count that. And then I had got injured a couple times back to back. OTAs, I got injured while I'm learning it. Then come back training camp, got injured. Then came back like week five, got injured again. <sighs> so I kept getting injured as I'm learning it. And you know, like the in season practice is not as much teaching and everything as mm -hmm. a training camp is. Mm -hmm. And you're not getting as many reps. The starters pretty much getting all the reps. The backup's getting like one to two reps a rack. Mm -hmm. So you're getting like, you might end the whole day with eight plays. You know what I mean? Thanks. So you're not learning. And then you get thrown into a game, you get into a game and it's like, it's foreign to you. So I start, I end up starting two games at safety my second year, but it was just so different, bro. I never, like, it was just a whole different, like, corner you see in one side of the field, safety, you see in everything. 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 You got to communicate <laughs> everything. Line. You got to communicate. You in the box, you, you tackling and everything, like. But then the next year, I had a full off season. I put, had a full off season. I got comfortable. And then I feel like this this season I had just took off. So your second year, bro, going through that though, with that transition and you feel me, you going back to back injury, injury. How you handle that on your mental, bro? Cause that's a big piece yeah. in the whole thing. Yeah, it was definitely hard at times. I'm not gonna lie, it was hard, but I just I feel like I just kept the faith, my mm -hmm. faith in God and just my like my my family and my friends had faith in me as well. And it was just like Every time I got injured, I was real close to like playing or I, I played and then I got injured. So I knew like it was right around the corner because mm -hmm. every time I got injured, I had, had an opportunity. Even my rookie year, my first start, got injured. Like So I knew it was just like, I can stay healthy, it's right there. Mm -hmm. So that's what was like, obviously my, my faith and but that right there as well was helping me move forward. That's big, bro, because we talk about a couple of times at Crossroads. It's that crossroad of, you feel me, going this way or this way. And if mm -hmm. you feel me, you won't so, you feel me, tapped into God and just faith and, you know, understanding that, boom, boom right here, you could have easily, you know what I'm yeah. saying, went the other way. And who knows how the rest of your, you know what I'm saying, time would have went. But you feel like this year, like, you know what I'm saying, going into this year was going to be, all right, I, I know the position now. I done learned it. I done seen it through and through, like, this about mm -hmm. to be my year. Yeah, that, that's what what I felt. I knew like where I was at on the depth chart wasn't where I wanted to be because you know we had some older guys, we had some guys we had paid, but I just knew like if I stay healthy and just stay the course, I know what I can do. Mm -hmm. And I was making plays like the whole OTAs. I was making plays because some of the starters wasn't there, so I was starting in OTAs and I was making plays and. I think Coach Campbell even had me as most one of the most improved, like top five most improved players. So I knew what I could do. Uh, I knew that it was going to be a grind, and I wasn't going to just start right away. I just had to stay the course because the season's so long. You don't Facts. know what could happen with injuries and whatever else. So I knew I just had to stay the course, and I knew like year three was going to be it for me. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So we got to speak about Dan Campbell because – that was really like the change in the city, the change of the Detroit Lions and how people viewed the Lions. So what has his passion, because we see the interviews, we see the passion that he brings. He's mm -hmm. real raw, real authentic, which as a player, shit, we would love to play for a coach like that. Facts. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because you could tell he cared. He ain't pump faking. <clears throat> so with you being behind that, what does that do for y'all as a team and what imprint has that left on Detroit as a city? Like, Especially like, having y'all first win in the season. Yeah, like you said, like as a player, you love to play behind that because how you see him in interviews and everything, that's exactly like how he is in meetings and everything. He's exactly the same way. Plus, he played in the league, so there's more, you know, there's more respect behind it. Like you can actually, you actually want to listen to what he's saying because he's been through it. And a lot of our coaching staff is like that. Like um, our DC Aaron Glenn played 15 years. Uh, a lot of our coaches are, are like that. Coach Brunel was the quarterback's coach. He played in the league. So it was like there's a lot of, like, respect that comes there. And then I just feel like Coach Campbell's, like, attitude and his mindset and how you see him, I feel like just embodies, like, what Detroit is. Like, it's, it's almost like a perfect match. Mm -hmm. um, but the first thing he instilled into us, like, we have a um, our motto is, like, grit. 
and we have it all over the building, but that's really what he instilled in us. Like we tackle so much, like training camp and everything, like, and that's our motto, just being physical and relentless and feel like I feel like that's what the city is as well. So it just meshed together perfectly. Facts. The city is different. Yeah, the city it's, is different. Speaking on the <laughs> speaking of the city, I mean, we always hear about Detroit. Like Detroit ain't no nah, fluffy place. Nah, like nah. it's real. So like I mean when I think about Detroit, I'm thinking about BMF. Like, don't count. Know, is Detroit like now that y'all done been winning, y'all got some, they showing love in the city now? Like oh, y'all boys yeah, getting yeah. in the clubs a little free? Like Yeah, nah, for sure. Definitely, definitely been showing love. Even even last year when we was on that winning streak, mm-hmm. they've been showing love. But this year, really been insane though. Like this year been a good year. I, I don't even during the season, I don't I personally I don't go out much. Yeah. But this year they was definitely showing us a lot of love though. What was the feel like? The locker room and like everything just during this season, because you know what I'm saying? You know how it is beginning of the season, like, boom, our goal is to, you feel me, finish what we was doing last year. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, let's go win this thing. Let's, but y'all was actually already putting it on early, like, doing what you had to do, doing what you need to do. Like, what was the feel to keep going? Like, all right, boom, don't get big headed. Don't keep, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, honestly, like, we never got complacent because we, we knew what we wanted to do. So like even when we was winning and like that was never just the end goal, just make playoffs. Like, like I swear, like even when we clinched the uh, NFC North, that celebration was just the locker room, bro. Yeah. Just in the locker room, it didn't even carry out to the plane. It was just the locker room, and then we was on to the next one. Like, oh, we trying to get the two seed now. Like, so it was always like we was looking for like the next best thing. Like we know what we got in mind. So I don't feel like there was ever like. Um, a feeling of complacency. Like, it, there was even games we won. It didn't even feel like a win. Mm-hmm. Like, nah, like, we're better than that. Like, a lot, there was a couple games like that, like, November-ish, that was feeling like that. So, I, I just feel like we never got complacent. Coach Campbell always was telling us, like, what we had in mind. Um, and I feel like the leaders just did a good job of, like, portraying that to the team. And it just carried throughout the whole team, I guess. You spoke on it a few seconds ago when you said – about the the clinching the division title, um, take us through the play that actually ended the game, where you picked off Nick Mullins. Yeah, so it's crazy because I'm usually the safety that's down, like in the box, um, and playing man and everything. And Kirby Joseph, number thirty one, he's the one that's in the post. But sometimes, like we get some calls, we just play left and right. So we got one call, we just played left and right. I think it was, it might have been like a, it was like a nickel blitz or one one of the pressures where we backed the nickel. So he comes down and I was in the post. Um, and I knew he was going to Justin Jefferson, like the whole game, Justin, <laughs> Jefferson, Justin Jefferson was going crazy. I knew like prime time, crunch time, like he's going to Justin Jefferson. He tried to do like a, Think what did he do? Like a, uh, he did like a corner post, mm-hmm. corner but corner like over. So once I seen him come across my face, I knew, I knew he was throwing it to him. So I just I had undercut it. It was a bad ball, but like even if he threw it regular, it was going to the to the um, true third corner. So he would have picked it anyway. Mm-hmm. But it was kind of it was kind of a duck a little bit. So I just I had jumped in front of it. And steal that. I really wanted to really run it back, but I had people like, get down, get down, get down. That's why when you see that video, like, I make one move and then I just like, yeah, like just fall drop. awkwardly. I just drop. But I hear people get down, get down, get down. I would have cracked that, dude. No, I, I wouldn't have heard nothing. I'm trying to, I'm trying to go to score. Nah, it was, it was lit because I remember watching that play. And then after that, because you had, that was like the back to back game, you had a pick to end the game, and it was like, Man, he's about to be one of the brightest stars uh, coming in this league, and that shit just felt so good. Cause like knowing you personally and yeah. shit, I was like, they finally started to yeah. see it. Like, yeah. you know, that's due to you know you staying healthy and you just being, you know, going where you where where you where you able to affect change that. Like, mm-hmm. shit, you was playing corner, now you playing safety, and you affected change in both spots. So that's mm-hmm. testament to you, bro. And you feel I like going that. off for you feel me? First year you got hurt, da da da. Second year you was battling, don't know. This year, now you feel me. You didn't got in there. You didn't made your mark, showing you who you are. You feel like this was the defining year for you, like for going forward. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, <clears throat> definitely defining year. Um, 
definitely defining year. I even had coaches say to me, like, this is a huge year for my career. And I probably don't even fully see it yet now, but it was a huge, huge year for my career. I, I had a lot of people saying that to me, honestly, but just hear it from one of my coaches, like, it meant a lot. Um, I believe him, too. I, it's definitely true. Nah, facts. You put in the work and earn that shit, man. Swear. Um, Tell us about Jared Goff. Yeah. Golf, golf <laughs> is funny. Uh, golf is like a funny. Every everyone everyone loves golf. Honestly, he's just like a funny, but he's cool. Like cool, calm, collected. Like leader. Like there was a lot of times in games like you just knew he was gonna score. Like when we had like you just knew. I feel like he just does everything right, bro. Like like everyone everyone backs golf. Like when he when golf has the ball. We know exactly what he's gonna do with it. He's gonna make plays, and he's just—I feel like he just calms everything down. Like everyone in that locker room likes golf. You think? Well, of course the city gotta love him, but you think he get more love in Detroit than when he was with LA? Yeah, yeah, he has to because they—they they traded him because they thought he wasn't good enough, Thanks. even though he just made the Super Bowl. It doesn't right. make sense to me. Crazy. They just lost in the Super Bowl. And they traded him because they didn't think he could get it done. But like, so obviously he gets, he definitely gets more love in Detroit. I would say. I mean, I can't really tell because I wasn't in LA, but and I was in college, so I wasn't really tapped into to all that too much. But like, I would say Detroit. When they when y'all played LA, did he 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 was ready for that? Like you could yeah, tell that week yeah. it was something different. Yeah, I mean, I get I, you honestly, you can't. <laughs> It's not like you could tell because he's so like calm and collected and like and he's never gonna really come out and say like yeah I want revenge and I want to beat yeah. these guys so bad. That's not how he is. But obviously you know that meant a lot to him to to beat him and it's and uh, as well as Josh Reynolds cuz he played in LA Facts. LA with um with golf as well. But th those aren't guys that's gonna come out and say it like revenge game. Mm -hmm. We really got to beat these guys, but we knew it, we knew what it meant to them to beat the Rams. If I ain't mistaken, he was out there with uh when we played with the Eagles and Ty Gurley and them boys. Mm -hmm. And he looked like he back in that type of element. Like he yeah. backed himself, his game, he confident back there. Like Yeah, like it was a lot of a lot of people saying like that's prime golf. Like and I believe it. Like the way he played this year, that was that's prime golf. Yeah. Yeah. Man, you got to take us through that conference championship, my boy, cause mm -hmm. damn, bro. <laughs> I, I, bro. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I wanted y'all to win so bad. I just wanted to see yeah. something different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Different, I wanted to bro. see something different, and like I felt like y'all really worked for that. <laughs> worked yeah. for it, bro. And we, yeah. but I ain't gonna lie, we did like a little, we did like a pre-interview before we even had the show running, bro. We mm -hmm. was there, we had boy right there, DJ talking. We was like, bro, it's about to be so crazy at uh, the yeah. Super Bowl. <laughs> he said they let y'all in that bitch. It was gonna be minks and hoes. <laughs> facts, minks and pimps, and everything. <laughs> That's crazy. But take us through that championship, bro. Just like leading up to it, just the whole you feel me, the whole game through and through, like the emotions yeah. and everything. Leading up to it, it was like when we made it, it was like damn, bro. Like we really one game away, bro. Like crazy to think about. Like it was almost like we. I feel like we just had clear so many milestones that year, and like. Okay, we made playoff, or we clinched NFC, then we made playoff, then we won. Mm -hmm. And then it was kind of almost like people didn't expect us to go that far. Like, they wanted us to go that far, but they didn't expect us. So everything was just kind of like a bonus. Like, But we knew where we wanted to go. Everything was just kind of a bonus. But then when we really got there, like, it was like, whoa, like, bro, yeah. if we win this, like, it's time. I'm going to be in the Super Bowl, <laughs> bro. Like, <laughs> some of you watched, like, when you were a kid, like. Whole family gonna be watching. My whole family gonna be there. My Facts. all my friends, and then we like, and and we saw all the media stuff of how like like we're so mismatched and San Fran so much better than us. And then we was watching the tape and we was like, bro, we can beat them, bro. Oh, yeah. And then even just going in the first half, like like we was up seventeen and we was like, bro, we can like we can really win this. And then they just. They just it snowballed in the second half. They they made some plays. Obviously, they made some plays, but then we had some bad plays, and it just you can't pin it on one play, mm -hmm. but it just compiled and like 
and we playing away too. Mm-hmm. It was so loud in there. It wasn't louder than Ford Field though, but it was loud in there, and it just compiled, and they just got momentum, and then we didn't have like little things didn't go our way, and then, but when you playing in playoffs like that, it adds up, bro. It quick. really does. It really does, and it adds up quick. And then obviously you see, you seeing we lost, but. But nah, that that's something like I definitely want to get back to mm-hmm. and, and and get to the Super Bowl. Just playing in that game was crazy. Um, yeah, it was it was tough, bro. Like it, that took me like a good like. I didn't probably get over it fully until after the Super Bowl. That's when I probably Man. fully got when over. When the boys I'm lost, you like, all right, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. When they <laughs> lost, because I'm watching and I'm like, damn, like that should be us in there. And then they lost, and the, and the, now the season. F- officially over so now I'm not really thinking about it too much mm-hmm. you know what I mean so I'm kind of like knowing that, y- that y'all was that close though like what was the post game speech cause it I know it couldn't have been like he mad you feel me cause y'all was doing what y'all had to do but yeah no it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't mad it wasn't mad it was like more emotional like mm-hmm. it was definitely emotional in that locker room you know players coaches staff like and it was it was emotional and really like silent and it kind of was just motivation. He told us, like, I know you guys aren't going to want to watch the Super Bowl, but I, I'm telling all of you guys to watch it because it's going to be motivation. That's exactly what Coach Campbell told us. And with the so team y'all got, y'all, y'all, y'all got a young team, too. So to have that experience now, I'll do y'all some good in the future for sure. That's yeah, a leader, nah, too. 100%. Having somebody come, you feel me, like you said, just speaking like that. Because you got coaches that can take that shit to the heart and be like, what the f- like? Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. but having somebody that's speaking to you, like, you know what I'm saying? I know it hurts, but you feel me? Watch the Super Bowl. You're gonna get motivated for next year. Like, you know what I'm saying? Let this be a learning lesson. Let this mm-hmm. be, you know, a positive thing instead of a negative thing. Like, that's somebody that's gonna lead you to the promised land. You feel mm-hmm. me? And like you said, if you want to get back, that shit gonna be hard. But yeah, it's having somebody hard. like that gonna be smooth. Yeah, it's gonna be hard. But he said that's 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 our goal. That's our goal, and we're going to do everything we can to, to get back there. Oh, yeah. So, as a player, bro, like, who a receiver in the league? You told, you spoke about Justin Jefferson in prime time. You already know what yeah. time it is. Like, what's a receiver in the league, you feel me, that you want to match up against or that you want to, you feel me, you want excited to play against? Excited. It, it's a little bit different now because I'm not, I'm not playing <laughs> corner, though. So, I don't really end up matching up with receivers too much unless it's like, I'm usually on tight ends. I'll be in a slot sometimes if nickel blitzing or something like that. So I don't really have no like receivers I want to match up against. Like mm-hmm. I like going Even against tight good, ends. Then, yeah, I right. like going against good competition. That's I would, the new I would, receiver. Yeah, I would like. I like. I like to go against um, just good, just good players. I would want to go against Kittle again, yeah. Kelsey. Um, yeah, those two, those two. Um, but it's just like it's a good benchmark as well too, just to see like those are the top two tight ends in the league, and just uh, see where you're at. I know where I think I'm at, and I um, yeah. So it'll just be a good test. You speak of, of the nickel blitzes. They sent you on a few this year. Yeah, you yeah, was yeah, making yeah. some plays. How you think that's going to be like one of them things that's in your part of your game? That's like, yeah, yeah let's yeah, go. Yeah, yeah no, nah, definitely. Um, Ag, our our defensive coordinator, he he loved blitzing. Like as you guys seen, it's either blitzing the nickel, or he's blitzing the linebacker, or he's blitzing me. Really, mm-hmm. um, and it was just like there was play calls you would get in the huddle, and you just know once he called to see, I'm getting a sack. I'm getting <laughs> Yo, a sack. Like hundred percent. I'm getting a sack. <laughs> or I'm getting a quarterback hit. And yeah, I think that's something he he's always gonna have that in his game, and um especially how well. Or with well, um, I did it. Mm-hmm. Blitzing, I think he's definitely gonna carry that over into next season. Got to. And he just he thinks a lot about that stuff. Like I'll be in his office, like after practice and and after meetings, and he'll explain the blitzes to me too. Like if you don't show this way, don't show it too early. It's gonna be open. It's either gonna be you or the running back, or he'll tell me like no one's gonna be there for you. It's yeah. just gonna be you. So I'm excited to see what you know the things he did, he comes up with next year. Damn, how has that helped you though? Cause I know like just having those meetings, getting those yeah. mental reps before you even in the game system, like, and then that shit showing the same way that yeah. you already thought about it. Yeah, no, it's crazy. Like, bro, right, he's so smart. Like a couple times he a couple times he then told me like it's gonna show up exactly like this. 
like that. The Broncos, the Broncos play where I strip sack on Russell Wilson. Mm -hmm. We called that exact blitz to that exact play like three times, at one once a day, like Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And usually it never happened like that. You run, you know, you run this play call against this coverage, but in game they ran this coverage. Or you run this play call against, and then they, they you run this coverage against this, and they run the ball. It was the exact play, bro. Like I can't That's make crazy. this shit up. It was the exact <laughs> play. And that happens a lot with AG. That'll happen a lot. So it's definitely good just, you know, meeting with them, even if it's just like five extra minutes, 10 minutes, 30 yeah. minutes. Sometimes it was over an hour and just giving, like, he'll give me like little advice, me and the other safety, Kirby Joseph. Um, and then it will show up in the game. So that's that was tough. that was good. I'm definitely that's, gonna continue to do dope. that. Knowing that we got the same agent though, bro. Like, you feel me? I met you a couple years ago yeah, out yeah. in Vegas. We had the players retreat and just knowing that Sean put that together for us, you know what I'm saying? Just exposed us to different stuff. Like, how has Sean um played a role for you just on the field, off the field, supporting anything? Like Yeah, no, Sean, Sean played a big role. Like, if you know him, he's like, bro, he's one of the hardest workers, bro. Like, Facts. like and he could talk too. And just seeing him, like this, like seeing him in action, and just he's he's a, he's a hard worker, and it's it's a good feeling knowing like your agent is working hard on your behalf. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I guess it, it 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 gives you like a little bit of comfort, just knowing like you know he's really going at, at bat for you. Uh, nah, so I appreciate him. He knows that. Um, yeah, he's a hell of an agent. Bro, I seen I didn't see Sean in the club, bro. Yeah. Like on the phone, getting yeah, it in, bro. Yeah. Like. Everywhere, and like you said, he know how to talk, bro, and really just appeal to people and make people want to work with you, or mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, work for you. So, yeah, definitely had to, definitely had to give a shout out to Sean, yeah, bro, because yeah, he, he different on that thing, bro. Hell yeah. Well, man, Ify, man, we appreciate you chopping it up with us coming through. <laughs> Can't wait to see what season four and year four brings to you, man. Facts, Wish you a healthy sure. season and more success and blessings your way, my brother. Uh, where can the people follow you at? You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram at Ifatu underscore M E L. So I F E A T U underscore M E L. That's on Twitter and uh, Instagram. Y'all be sure to go sure. tap in with my man Ify, man. Appreciate you once again. Appreciate, Appreciate your thousand hours out the mug crew. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Follow us on YouTube and all the socials. Wherever you at, we at. You know where to find us, man. A H. OTM underscore, man. If you're rocking with us, tap in. If you're not rocking with us, tap in, man. Tap, tap. You already know. Don't forget, man, you can't cheat the grind. You got to put in that time. Thousand hours out the mud. Yeah, That's